Okay, so this video is in answer to some questions that have been uh, posed by some viewers, uh, some folks who have watched my video on eliminating uh, render blocking CSS for uh, mobile first web design. And uh, first of all, thank you to everybody who's been watching my videos. I never had any idea that uh, I would have this many people watching. But this is a discussion of using the critical path CSS generator by Jonas Sebastian Olson. This was the best one that I found. It uh, worked for me, did an excellent job. And so that's the one that I stuck to. So there's two questions that come up. One is, do I have to do uh, the critical path for every single page on my site? And the second question, which is closely related to it, is why should I do that? So I'm going to cover both of those and just give a brief demonstration of that. Also going to cover another problem that was noted by a couple of folks who stated that they copied or pasted in their CSS into the window here and all they see is one line. So I'm, I just want to do that in a little bit and show you what you might be seeing. Uh, I know I've run into the same issue when uh, I've been using uh, the CSS minifier and also the critical path CSS generator. So it does happen, but I want to go over a couple of those things. So on the screen right now is Jonas Sebastian Olson's critical path CSS generator. And as I stated in my previous video, there are three fields here, or three, three areas that you deal with. Uh, the URL, uh, the full CSS, which is going to be your full CSS from your style sheet on your site. And then this area here, number three, is actually going to generate uh, the critical path CSS for the above the fold content and will display another window when that uh, actually uh, appears. So I want to point out a couple of things and trust me, I missed this the first time as well. I have a website and uh, see if I can type and talk at the same time. Okay, and uh, I'm not going to put the HTTP in and everything. I did that at one time. Uh, so I, I can put all this in and this actually is my domain name. Now if I pasted in my CSS for that, I could actually get uh, a result from that and what happens is if I paste that result in it really doesn't uh, do anything or it doesn't do what you need for it to do so we're going to start out here by first putting in your URL for your domain now I'm going to show you something that I missed uh, and this goes back to the old thing about read all instructions before proceeding if you go down to the bottom of the page here uh, and uh, there are some examples here of using it, but notice this paragraph right here. It says you need to generate critical CSS for each page individually. Make sure to only move down the full CSS to the bottom of the page for pages where you've in inlined the critical path CSS. Okay, so that's the issue. You have to do it for every single page. Why? Okay, that's a really good question. And uh, let me show you, this is a spreadsheet that I made to basically uh, lay out my f my website design so I have my menus here and everything but what I want to point you to is the fact that I had basically four different types of pages so I had pages that were basically just HTML text I had some pages that I called outline pages and those are actually using table rows and table data and then I had mixed pages and the mixed pages actually have a combination of a lot of things. Uh, I'll take this back. The outline page does not use the table rows. It uses the outline, HTML outline. The list pages use the table rows and table data. Okay, so I'll try not to confuse you too much. Anyway, this was just a convenience. It was something that I did to lay out the pages. But in the process of doing that, what I did was I actually created a list of all the pages on my site. and all total, there are 18 pages on my site. So as a convenience for using the Critical Path CSS generator, what I did was in my spreadsheet, I just copied these pages 
and then pasted them into a notepad document. Okay, and this is going to make it uh, a lot easier when you get to uh, using the Critical Path CSS generator because two things happen. If you try to type in all of your page names, you could misspell something and things could happen. Or you might not just want to sit and type all the names. So in order to prevent errors and to create a little bit of convenience, I created just a notepad document. Okay, so that's going to make it a little bit more convenient as far as actually dealing with our file names. So I could go ahead here, my first one here, this is my first uh, page there, and I'm going to have, go ahead and copy that, go over here to the uh, CSS generator. I've already typed in my domain. So all I have to do now is just simply put in the slash and put in the actual page name. Okay, now let me go back to why you need to do this for every individual page. Each of these pages, as you can see here, I've kind of color coded them because of the formatting that's on the page. But even though I have pages that have the same type of a layout, there may be different elements on some of those pages. So each one of these pages can have unique elements. And I could go back over here to my website. Hold on just a second. There we go. Okay, so my home page in my spreadsheet is uh, detailed as a mixed page. So I have some HTML, um, just plain text. I've got some floats here. I've got images. Uh, I've got this quote here that's using the span tag. Uh, some links and things so those are the types of things that are on that I can go to another page uh, let's see what would be a good one here articles this is an article list this is actually using the table rows and table data now these pages under this menu pretty much follow the same format but again they're individual pages and there may be some slight variation somewhere maybe I've changed something at the bottom of the page or something like that um, my contact page is a mixed page it starts out with text but then I have these these are actually buttons here if you hover over them they don't seem to be but I've explained that up here but the fact is I've got some JavaScript in here uh, I've got some, these are actually buttons and things. So this is a mixed page. So the point that I'm trying to make is that each and every one of these pages may have unique elements. And it's the unique elements that need to be styled or need to be identified for the above the fold critical path. Uh, if I was to say go to uh, each one of these pages here are almost identical. If I was to go here and just do this page and then paste that critical path CSS into every single one of these it might work but I really haven't taken into account whether or not there are any unique elements there that might not work properly or that might not really give me that page load speed that I want so and that was the page I was just on here my article index okay so that's one thing so you want to just uh, go through this procedure for each page and I'm going to go through that and then uh, just kind of repeat that a little bit okay so the next issue is pasting the CSS and I've already gone over to my uh, host site I've gotten into my CSS file and I've got it uh, it should be loaded here let me see if I can uh, no I didn't I did the file name alright I gotta go back over here and uh, get my CSS again alright so I'm just going to copy this all right all right so here all I have to do should have to do is just simply paste it in all right now here's what I see and this kind of freaked me out the first couple times I saw it because it only looks like you're getting the last line now when I have pasted this in from the unminified sheet it sometimes will put in only the first or last line but this particular f box here and I this isn't my page I didn't program it and it works just fine but this seems to be working like uh, just a DOS text editor where you don't have any wrapping going on if I was to hit my home key on my keyboard that's the first line 
So basically, all of that minified CSS is in one single long line. And if I go to the end, that's the end of it because I've been in there to see it. All right. So now I've got a page. I've got my CSS. I'm going to go ahead and hit the critical path button to generate that. And there it is. Okay. So now at this point, all I have to do is copy that. I would go over to the CSS minifier, minify that, and then go and put that inside style tags inside the head element of that page. All right. So let's say that I've got that one done. I'm going to go ahead and hit clear here. I don't have to repaste my CSS. That's already done. But I'm going to go over here to this. Click there. I'm using the shift home key and a control C. And then I'm back over to my browser. I'm going to highlight this. Control V. And there's my next page. Now, if you have the luxury of having multiple monitors. I actually have three of them here. This is a little bit easier if you have at least two monitors or you can have your notepad page up on one and you can have your web browser on the other or if you want to go ahead and try to split the applications uh, on the screen that makes it a little bit easier. But here I've got my second page. My CSS is already there. Hit the critical path and again, all I have to do now is copy that, go over to the CSS minifier, paste that in, minify it, and then put that in the head element of this page. Okay, so for each page on your website, you have to do that because, again, this is going to take into account the actual path to that particular URL. It's going to take into account any... Uh, uniquely styled elements and it's going to it's going to identify the specific content for that specific page so uh, I suppose if all of your pages were exactly alike and the only thing that differed was the content of your text blocks you could probably do that but even uh, Jonas Sebastian Olson who created this is even saying you need to do it individually so I missed that the first time that I did that. Now here's the thing about it. What we're after, of course, is uh, decreasing our load time and increasing our page speed, okay, to get a, a better uh, number there through Google Page Speed Insights or, or whoever. So the best practice here would be to just simply follow the instructions, do each page one at a time. If you have a lot of pages on your site, go ahead and make a list like this. This really does simplify things. The time that you take to make this list will reduce the amount of time that you're going to be spending typing and maybe getting an error and, and having to go back and backtrack. So this really does uh, help. Uh, these tools are fantastic. Uh, just another note is this is not the only CSS, uh, critical path CSS generator out there. This is the one that I found that worked and it works uh, wonderfully. Uh, I was able to really get my uh, page speeds way up. So anyway, do the critical path for each individual page. Create a text list of your page names. If you wanted to, you could even just copy this whole thing and just change the, you could pre-make the entire list and paste it in, whatever's easier for you. But it does need to be done for each and every page. So once that's done, and once you spend the time doing that, you're going to get the reward of, of seeing your numbers uh, go up as, as far as your page speed score. So thanks again to everybody who's been watching uh, the videos that I do. I'm not a web designer. I'm learning this, and uh, I'm very thankful to uh, YouTube and the YouTube community. Uh, we're all sharing information, and that's what we're trying to do is learn from each other. So uh, if you've learned something from me, thank you for watching. and. Uh, you know, I'll keep an eye out for your videos as well. So thanks again for watching.